Hello, church family. Uh, Pastor Clayton here. Hey, I uh, just wanted to take a moment and just, uh, just welcome you. It is Easter, and it looks extremely different. But I can tell you this. We believe in a Jesus that rose from the grave. We believe in this resurrection, the crucifixion. We believe in all these things, guys. And I can tell you right now, here, and you know it, here, we celebrate Easter every Sunday. We celebrate the risen King every Sunday. And so maybe we're not here together, but I'm going to tell you, we're all in one, one spirit, all in one, praising the name of Jesus. I know it looks different, but it's okay. We're going to make it through this time, and we're going to come out on top because we believe in the one that's on, on top. Guys, I'm excited. My brother, my pastor, Pastor Bob, is coming up to speak. God bless. Welcome today as we recognize this very special occasion. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter 16. Let's begin reading in verse 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. Let's pray. Our Father, we come today, Lord, and once again, celebrating you, celebrating this occasion, celebrating this time, and Father, knowing that no matter what circumstances may look like, what the world around us may appear to be, Father, it's you that matters. It's you where our focus lies, and we're asking you, Lord, for the anointing that rests upon your word to touch each and every one that's here today to see and listen to what you have to say to your church. In Jesus' name, amen. What an exciting time to be a Christian. What a tremendous opportunity to declare our faith to all of those who are around us and we don't have to really say a word to their faces. I believe with all my heart that this message is for a time such as this. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is also the day that man has set aside to acknowledge and celebrate almost anything except the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say this first of all. Easter is not about colored eggs, cute little chicks, cute little bunnies, buying a new Easter suit, buying a new Easter dress, buying a new Easter hat, or getting some new Easter shoes. Easter is not about the Easter madness sale or the Easter white sale at your favorite department store. Truth be told, Easter is not even about a certain day or a certain time of the year. Easter is about Jesus Christ rising alive from his grave to proclaim eternal life for all who will receive him. Resurrection Day should be celebrated every day, not just a day designated on our man-made calendars. It should be celebrated every morning that we open our eyes to a new day. It should be celebrated every time we see our children running and playing. Every time we realize that God is providing for us. Every time one of our loved ones makes that transition from this life to eternal glory. Jesus died that we might have grace and mercy and life everlasting. Not a, not a once a year grace or, or, or a sometime grace or but a 24 hour a day, seven day a week, 52 weeks a year, every year for the rest of eternity, grace. Every day, 
we should be celebrating Jesus. What he did for us is unlike anything that anyone else will ever do for us. There may come a time when someone might give up their life for you. There are some parents who would give up their lives to save their children. But that saving power is a physical thing. All we can do is temporarily save the physical body. But thank God for a man named Jesus who gave up his life that we might be able to live life and live it more abundantly. Not only did he give up his life, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Not only do we receive physical healing, we're healed from the sickness of sin, from eternal damnation, and from our carnal existence. He gave up his life so that we are no longer condemned to die, but grace and mercy have been extended to us by the Almighty God. What he did for us, no one else will ever be able to do. After Jesus was nailed to that cross, after he asked God to forgive us, knowing that we must have been crazy and ignorant of what we were doing to the Son of God. I say we because every time we sin, we're part of those who crucified Jesus. After Jesus told the thief on the cross that today he would see paradise. After Jesus told John, behold your mother, and his mother, behold your son. After he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After he had cried, it is finished, and hung his head, giving up the life that he held in his own hands. After they pierced him with a spear to make sure he was really dead. After all that, they took him down off that cross and put him in a borrowed tomb. Now, let me digress just a minute here. How many of you know that the enemy is never secure in his victory over you? He's never quite comfortable with feeling that he's defeated you. He, he never knows whether you're going to rise back up in spite of him. That's why he keeps coming back to attack you over and over again. Back to the after. After all of those things, the Jewish leaders went to Pilate and asked that a, a stone, a very large stone, the Greek word here is mega. It was a mega stone. Be placed in front of that tomb along with armed guards, so that no one would be able to steal the body of Jesus and claim that he came back to life. They, they ensured that this huge stone was rolled in front of the tomb, and that sealed it effectively so nobody could come in or go out. They used a, an enormous boulder, a great big rock, if you please, to seal the tomb of Jesus. So... Well, again, let me just take a little bit of an aside. There are a lot of stones mentioned in the Bible, and we, we need to understand that a stone typically can represent some form of burden or some form of hindrance. Jesus died, and his death was a burden to all those who loved him. If there was any hope of him overcoming death, it was so greatly diminished by the thought that there was no possible way to escape from behind that stone. That stone was a burden that couldn't be easily moved. The Romans used this gigantic stone because they knew that nobody could move it without causing a lot of commotion and, and attracting a lot of attention and being caught. And listening to me right now, there are those who are weighed down by some tremendous stones. We call them burdens. Some are be, being worn down by the stone of financial difficulty. Some by the stone of depression. Some of guilt. Some a broken heart. Poor health. A broken marriage. 
a broken family, or just being spiritually, morally, mentally, or physically broken. Being broken is a mega burden. Proverbs 27.3 says the stone is heavy. We know that. The stone that's weighing you down is so enormous that if it ever gets removed, everybody who knows you will take notice because there's been such a significant change in you. Sometimes even those who think that they are fully grounded in the word seem to have just too much to bear. And that's exactly how the enemy wants us to feel. Listen, friend, if you remember nothing else today, don't let the stone stop you. Isaiah 8.14 says that stone can be a stone of stumbling. You're doing okay. you got it all together. You're walking the straight and narrow. You might even think that you're so close to Jesus that nothing's going to happen to you. But then suddenly you trip because the devil has faced, placed a stone of stumbling right in your path. If you trip, don't quit. Catch your balance and keep on keeping on. Even if you stumble and fall, get back up, dust yourself off, straighten out your walk, but don't let the stone stop you. Zechariah 12 and 3 says that stone can be burdensome. But see, stones aren't meant to be easy. They're not meant to accommodate you. They're not meant to fit into your scheme of things. They're not meant to bring efficiency into your life. They are meant to change you and the way you do things and the way you see things. They're meant to get in your way. They're meant to hinder you, to stop you from accomplishing anything that God wants you to do. And yet God gives us a way out of these things even when it seems like there is no way. It says in Psalm 55 and verse 2, to cast your burden on the Lord and he'll sustain you. He'll never suffer the righteous to be moved. If there's anybody here today that knows that God can and will sustain you, then you ought to be looking for somebody that you can tell so that they can give their burdens to the Lord and don't let the stone stop you. Most stones seem to be designed to break you. Matthew 21, 44, Jesus even said, whoever falls on this stone, talking about him being the foundation stone, shall be broken in a good way. But stones are difficult to overcome. They can hurt you and even kill you if they catch you unawares. In our text, <laughs> you thought I'd forgotten, didn't you? It's with this huge stone in front of the tomb of Jesus that Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome started to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. These ladies started to the tomb not knowing how they're going to be able to move that stone had anoint the body of Jesus. I know you do remember, that was a huge stone, very large stone. The three of them together wouldn't be able to move it, even if they were to give it all they had. And despite the difficulty, they started anyway. It would have been easy to not even start. Knowing the stone was in their way, and yet they went anyway. On this resurrection day, I want to encourage everyone to be like those women. They knew that the stone was blocking their way, and yet they didn't let that stone stop them. When you find yourself climbing up the rough side of the mountain, bills are too many, dollars are too few, don't let the stone stop you. When you find... If your name is being dragged through the mud, don't let the stone stop you. When you meet someone who doesn't know the Lord and their heart is cold and stony and, and impenetrable, keep on loving on them and don't let the stone stop you. 
when your health is failing and you're lying on your bed and it's cold, oh, and you look up, trying to look beyond the circumstances, trying to see where your help is coming from, don't let the stone stop you. When you don't know how you're going to make it, you don't have the resources, you don't have whatever you think it takes, don't let the stone stop you. See, the devil wants that stone to stop you. The devil wants the stone to stop your marriage from working. He wants the stone to stop your financial blessings. He wants it to stop you from knowing God's plan for your life. He wants your family to fail. He wants your job to weigh you down. He wants to stop you from getting your education. He wants to stop you from being a success. The devil wants to stop you from praising and worshiping God. but I know a stone that's actually on my side. I know a stone bigger than any stone the devil can throw my way. I know a stone bigger than any stumbling block that the devil can put in front of me. My stone is bigger than any mountain, and I can hide behind my stone when the going gets rough. Because I heard Jesus say to Peter, on this rock... I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. See, we have a song in our songbook that says, in times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Is there anybody hearing me today that's anchored in the rock of ages? The rock that existed since before the beginning of time. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I want to share one last thing. And that's just this. If you stay anchored in the gospel, if you stay anchored in the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, don't turn back there's another kind of stone that the book of Revelation says Jesus will give to us. Revelation 2.17 says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcomes will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knows saving he who receives it. Church, I'm glad that you and I can make it into his presence. He's got a new name waiting in a, in a white stone. I don't know about you, but I want my white stone with my new name in it. Down here on earth, my name never has, never will amount to very much. But when I'm standing before the living word, I'll have my new name that he will give me and nobody will be able to touch it. When Jesus died, the blood streamed down, the sun refused to shine, the earth began to rock and reel, the veil in the temple was torn in two. But early on Sunday morning, as Mary, Mary, and Salome went to the tomb, the stone had already been rolled away. Mark 16 and 5 says, And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were afraid. And he said to them, Don't be afraid. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's risen. He's not here. He's risen. He's not here. Luke 24, 5, the angel sitting on top of that 
great big huge mega stone said to them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Early on that Sunday morning, Jesus rose up from the dead with all power, all power, all power in his hands. That means he's got the power to roll your stone away. He's got the power to pick you up, turn you around, and place your feet on solid ground. God has enough white stones for everyone. I want to ask you to know him today. Have you ever even tried to know him? Which leads to, do you want to know him? While you're thinking about that, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I am so grateful to you for everyone who hears the sound of my voice and everyone, Lord, who hears your voice speaking to them. Everyone, Lord, who will believe you and let you take control of their lives. Everyone who will face a brand new resurrection every time they wake up to a new day. Everyone, Lord, who will humble themselves, seek your face, and pray, knowing that you will hear and you will come to them, and you and they can form an everlasting partnership to walk the rest of whatever this life holds in victory, in spite of what all circumstances appear to be. We will rise above it all in Jesus' name. Amen.